Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to check out a video by Akshat titled as Our Journey of Making INR 10,000 to 1 million dollar a year. 10 critical lessons we learned featuring Ayushi Chand. Let's jump to the video. Yes, we have been lucky. I'm not saying that we were born into extreme poverty, right? Uh, so we are very lucky from that perspective. But there are money-oriented sacrifices that we have made. Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So on today's video, Ayushi and I are going to discuss about our lives as to how we as a couple were able to achieve financial independence fairly early in life. Just a very quick anecdote. So I met Ayushi in the year 2014. I don't know. It's a 2012. So that is the year. That is incorrect. That is Please read Akshat's <laughs> YouTube community post for the exact timeline. Alright, so I'll assume 2012. So basically, almost like 11 years now. So when we met, I was making a salary of 10,000. And the reason was that I was working with a non profit organization. And Ayushi had just graduated from SRCC. So she was not making any money or probably was getting like some stipend, I'm not sure. But our salary was like very, very low. Then over the next 11-12 years, since we have met, I will correct the timelines, we have been able to make decent amount of money and now we are settled in Goa and over the next few years, we plan on traveling the world, living across different different parts of the world, wagera, wagera, so which is a separate video altogether. But on this video, what we are going to do is that we are going to share our 10 most critical learnings that has allowed us to get to this stage. So we keep it very honest, conversational to the point and many of you might not know Ayushi, so very quick introduction about you and then I will introduce me and then we will talk. Hi everyone, I am Ayushi. I am an economics graduate from SRCC. I did my master's in economics and then worked as an Indian economic service officer with the government of India for the past 8 years. So the first key skill that we would advise you to cultivate is picking high value or monetizable skills. So over to Ayushi that A, you are in the government job, how much money do you make and which type of high value monetizable skills you have developed. For me, the high monetizable skill would be my background in economics. It Either you can be a generalist where you know a lot of subjects, for example, you do a BA honours, right? Or you can be a specialist. I chose economics because I wanted to do and study more about economics. I did my graduation, then my masters, and I was also on the trajectory to do my PhD in economics. Of course, I could not do it because of certain reasons. But I chose to work as an Indian Economic Service Officer with the Government of India. Now I have sufficient experience in economics as well as, as public policy, which means that I can leverage it and work with any of the firms that I want to. Now, when it comes to salary, of course, government salaries cannot be compared with private salaries and we have already made a video about it earlier, which you can watch in the links below. But it really depends on the skill you have. More than that, it depends on where you're working. If you're working with the private sector with a similar background as me, then the salaries could be touching the sky. Right. So I, I assume, right, I mean, I'm, and I understand that a lot of you would uh, give the commentary and say, I see, like, you're working in the government, salary is not very high. Uh, so, okay, so let me break it down for you. So, number one is that if you are, for example, when I was working in a non profit, the salary there as an industry was very low to begin with. Same happens in the government that the salary is low to begin with, or you know, one could argue it is high or low depending on how we see that quantum. Uh, second related point is that it's also about switchability, right? For example, once you work as a group A officer, you might have seen that many IAS, IPS, they shift to private sector and end up making a lot of money. So that switchability wala angle is definitely there. So I think Ayushi is stressing on that. One critical point that I picked up was the generalist versus specialist debate. So Ayushi is a specialist. I'm more of a generalist, right? Yes, over time, my expertise has been cultivated in finance, uh, but I started out as a management consultant. I did my MBA. So MBA by nature is a generalist degree. So I do not completely agree or concur to the fact that you should become a specialist. That's one way of doing it. But it's more about, are you in the top 1% of things or top 5% of things? If you're doing them well, and even if you're a generalist, no problem there. So that's how I it choose to see it. It is also about the scarcity factor. If you're in the top 1% as a specialist, then of course you'll be earning much more higher compared to a generalist who's, uh, you know, there are so many generalists around. So you, they, you, they would not be getting as much as higher salary as a specialist who is in the top 1%. Completely agree to the point but one quick addendum there would be that there are multiple paths to making like high income yeah, streams. Absolutely. So generalist view up and if you are in the top 1%, 5% then you will be able to monetize that somehow. right? If you are a specialist and if you are on that job track then I think you will be able to make good money from that. Be it you can be a highly specialized management consultant, investment banker, bureaucrats I don't know. So Aisha can give more clarity that how much money legally bureaucrats make uh, bureaucrats would make a fixed salary structure you can you know google it and uh, 
we just google mm-hmm. 7th cpc 7th uh, central pay commission and it's a fixed salary structure so okay so this generalist versus specialist debate can continue no doubt about that very quickly noting down some of the key monetizable skills that i see right now is that your ability to create content that has become a very monetizable thing understanding of tech that has become a very monetizable skill uh, if you are in a job i'm not sure if you can do like parallel jobs when you are working with the government but any other high value monetizable skills that you can think about or which you would like to talk about that people in a job could potentially pick there are multiple skills that anybody can develop but on top of my mind which uh, i can think of right now are the evergreen skills so structured thinking thinking in a very structured manner if you are an expert or if you can actually communicate effectively with everyone around you then i think this is an evergreen skill which can actually lead you to the top 1% or oh, definitely i feel that communication and evergreen skills are go to skills in a way right whether you are doing content creation whether you are writing books or whether you are looking to switch your field or even grow in your job you need to be an effective communicator right and effective communication not only just means like speaking english well but it is also about having that thought process and confidence and from that perspective always look to cultivate and enhance your communication skills that is a very very highly monetizable skill out there for that you can also check our sponsors for today which is camly it's a wonderful english learning platform where you are taught by friendly native speakers they also offer group online classes which simulates real life dynamics of group discussion and public speaking and there is always one tutor and maximum of 3 students from across the globe so this way you are able to interact with people from diverse backgrounds and also each class is based on a particular topic that you can select and also the prices are quite affordable and if you use the link in the description box you will get roughly 60% off on your group classes so one month access that typically costs roughly 2400 rupees you can avail it at 999 rupees so the second tip that we would like to give you is that focus on getting a good college education now i know that we are going to get like crazy amount of heat because these days it's all about like a startup banane wala culture who cares about college this that so over to ig what is your perspective in terms of brand value of colleges i think colleges are quite important and they were especially very important when we graduated colleges actually used to give a signaling effect what a signaling mean signaling means that interviewers used to understand where you're coming from what kind of academic record you have so for example when i graduated from srcc it acted as a brand on my cv and this particular point was also raised during my indian economic service interview upsc interview right so this actually used to give the interviewer an idea about your academic record now of course things have changed a lot because of social media and because of uh, your ability to demonstrate your skills on different social media platforms you can give this signaling through the work you're doing for example if you write well you can actually create a public profile for yourself on linkedin or twitter and demonstrate your abilities there your expertise there okay so just building on to that point so basically what happens is that my perspective is that number one uh, when it comes to top tier colleges they are very very important even now they have a lot of relevance why does that happen because see think about it this way that not everyone who is in final year undergrad is going to start their business even if they start they might fail and they might have to join a corporate job now there how the shortlisting happen so i used to select people for management consulting during my job and we used to get like this thick stack of bundle of resumes now how do you think we will scan it pehli cheez just go and take a look at the person's college is that right is that wrong you guys make a call but that is how ib vc p all these selections happen it's a very simple signaling effect that college gives so therefore the value of top college still holds Yes, hundred percent agree to the point that the value of average college and below average college has just completely gone down the drain. Hundred percent agree to that point. This also means that if in case you are not from a good college, it does not mean that it's the end of your career. You can use opportunities online to create a strong portfolio and generate signaling effect in some other way. But yes, if you are in a situation where you have the option of getting into good college, please explore that. College is very important. Everything that you do in life is very important. It has helped me. For example. I went to INSEAD, and the first business that I created was around MBA college application. I was able to make a lot of money through that. So for me, I would 100% agree to the point that good colleges are critical in your career journey and and money making journey. Okay, 
so the third thing that we learned is that taking contrarian bets is very very important in life so very quickly uh, talking about uh, ayushi and i so so ayushi deliberately made the choice of joining a government job so the credit goes to her that because of her job stability i was able to take a lot of risks in my life so for us as a couple it made a little bit more sense that she went the conventional way i went the unconventional way and took more contrarian bets in life starting businesses trying to grow my presence on youtube social media platform wagera wagera but coming to contrarian bets the way it works is very simple see if everyone is buying hindustan unilever stock and you also start buying hindustan unilever stock at that particular juncture you are not going to make crazy amount of money because most likely you are getting it at a very hyper price you will only make money on any stock or any investment or any career move when you are believing in a contrary idea if people feel that you know what doing job is the best thing in the world and you are doing startups maybe you will get the most return at that juncture from that move so we feel that making such contrarian moves have been very positive and healthy for us so what other contrarian moves we are making together so i'll request her to explain two three plans that we have in mind so uh, what we have planned for the future are the following things first we are uh, looking at some real estate purchase and uh, this is not going to be for residential use we are going to do some commercial activities there we have some things in mind for example airbnb and short term rentals the second thing is writing a book together and uh, this is something we had been planning for some time and will be released soon so this is again a contrarian bet and i hope it works out for us the third thing is having location flexibility which we had been working throughout our life so far and this is something we will be working on we are going to travel the world right now we are in goa but we do plan to stay at different places for a substantial period of time in the next few years right so the contrarian bets can be of different different variety shapes and forms so we'll not get into the specifics of what specific contrarian bet that you should be taking but very simply explaining the logic that if most people are going right try to go left that is where most career success has come to us money success has come to us from that contrarian move perspective so moving on the fourth good thing that we have done for our career is that we have created complementary skill set just to give an example so i am very bad at reading the fine print right for example i don't read any legal contracts i'm very be bad at filing taxes wagera wagera so ayushi takes care of that work so she handles like all the fine print legal contracts read karna and all oh akshat is excellent at that bird eye view of our future so he has a long term vision and he has been working very hard towards achieving that long term vision and thanks to him uh, to a majority part that we are here where we are right now and i am good at more of uh, you know getting the tasks done in the daily life Okay, so on camera, Aishi is being nice, uh, but anyways, let's no, let's not move on. Not at all. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. See, uh, the point is that you must have both macro and micro skills. So in our relationship, I bring the macro, and Aishi is bringing the micro. Both are extremely critical. That's what I would say. Some people have both. Some people need to cultivate both. But one way or the other, we think that you, as a couple, need to have both these micro and macro skills, and which should complement each other. World is rewarding self learners. आपने आजकल देखा भी होगा कि, for example, when you go to a doctor, the doctor will give you like ten treatments and you know, दुनिया भर की चीजें. But you have to go and research. Same goes for investment. That you have to go and research. Same goes for law even. Right? That if you are taking support of a lawyer if you leave it everything to that particular person it might be troublesome so it's always beneficial to have the ability or cultivate the ability to learn things on your own and find a partner who can complement that that would be our word of advice on this topic okay so let's move on to point number 5 which is that you must create multiple pathways to money so this means a portfolio of income stream or portfolio of skill set that can be converted into an income stream So I have already spoken quite extensively about my income stream this that so I'll not bore you again with that I'll probably link some videos please go and watch it in the description and comment box over to Ayushi because Ayushi technically can have only one job as per her employer so she cannot technically create multiple income streams but what she is focusing on is creating multiple skill sets so over to Ayushi if you can explain what type of skill sets you are creating so yes technically as a government officer I cannot take any other employment and therefore it restricts the number of income streams i can have but there are certain avenues which i have been exploring for example i have been writing and writing is a skill which i think pays forever as we discussed earlier also so we are writing a book together and that is an income stream that i am exploring the second is learning about real estate now real estate can be a very very vague sector and an opaque sector 
So I've been learning about real estate quite extensively. The third thing is homeschooling. We are homeschooling our kid and I have been doing a lot of research on homeschooling and hopefully we'll be able to present our homeschooling ideas also in the future. So honestly, like I mean, we don't pick up skills from the viewpoint of monetizing it eventually. Uh, but the idea is that sometimes it's a combination of four or five skills that can allow you to create an income stream. For example, I was always an avid speaker, so to say, but I never learned like public speaking per se. You thought that yeah, one day I'll start my YouTube channel or something like that, right? So same goes for anything that we are learning that we try to learn things intently and try to create a portfolio of investments that. subsequent topic some other day or portfolio of skill set that will eventually or hopefully give us some income at some other later stage in life which we can't even imagine at this point okay so with that said let's move to point number 6 which is philosophy of money i'm not saying psychology of money i'm saying philosophy of money because aap kitna bhi paisa kama lo and if you're not able to save it or if you create bad habits and create like massive lifestyle inflation or make bad investment moves all that wealth can disappear like this so over to aishi if you can in your words explain our philosophy of investment because audience is pak chuki hongi meri philosophy sunke so over to you our philosophy of investment began from saving now we are both from middle class families acha ek very quick point here because many a times we get the comment that akshat you are hni you are not from middle class this that see i do not know the standard definition of middle class but we have gone through the similar type of struggles that many families in india do yes we have been lucky i am not saying that we were born into extreme poverty right uh, so we are very lucky from that perspective but there are money oriented sacrifices that we have made for example aishi got into yale but she was not able to attend yale because of monetary constraints that we did not have the money So there are several things. It's not as if that we were born in like extreme richness or something like that. So we have worked hard. Okay. So over to Aishi to complete her thought. So I think our philosophy of investment began from saving. Uh, we come from middle class families, and uh, this habit of saving was inculcated in us by our parents from the very beginning. And this is a very important habit because it makes you understand that nothing comes for free. You have to work hard for everything that you do. We would not say we are frugal in living, but uh, we do not uh, go and splurge like. uh you know uh, like anything so we have that saving saving habit and this is the first thing that i would like to point out the second is uh, developing multiple streams of income as akshat has been talking about in his videos also and investing uh, in a wise manner so we have always focused on investment earlier when we started working our investment used to be around 20 to 30% of our income and now of course it has increased much more to around 90 to 95% of our income the third thing has been preparing for our bad times nobody knows when bad times occur and life can be very uncertain so we have been mindful of that and we have been preparing for the bad times during our good times so we have that emergency fund and we have our insurances in place and we have been saving for our kid also so these are the things that we have been focusing on in our philosophy of investment okay so the seventh tip from our side would be that growing your life in concentric circles now what is the meaning of this it simply means that for example when aishi and i or i was in a job i used to focus a lot on my job try to excel at it so that was one concentric circle when i left job i picked the second concentric circle ki yaar pehla business bana lenge then third concentric circle so on and so forth so aishi is in a job so i'll take her perspective on it that how is she building concentric circle theory from her own way the reason why we are highlighting this specific strategy with you is because many a time some of you know सपनों के घोड़े दौड़ा देते हैं राइट की आर ओके आई डू दिस ऑल्सो आई डू दैट ऑल्सो एंड देन वी एंड अप डूइंग नथिंग सो आई थिंक कीपिंग दिस कंसेंट्रेट थियरी अ लाइफ इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो ओवर डू आई शी एज टू इफ शी इज डेवलपिंग सम काइंड ऑफ कंसेंट्रेट सर्कल्स एंड हाउ डज शी थिंक हर करियर इज गोइंग टू प्रोग्रेस फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट इफ शी कैन गिव अस एन आइडिया so of course when you are in your 20s you are primarily focused on getting a job and that was what my concentric circle was studying and then clearing upsc and then working for that job now over time as your responsibilities increase towards your household specifically and you also have a kid then of course you want more of uh, freedom and flexibility in that sense so of course i am also looking for more flexibility in my life going ahead to give more time to my son and that means that i am building different skill sets so that i can explore more of these career paths and that will be my second concentric circles and of course third concentric circles would develop as and when you know i start building and working upon my second concentric circle so the eighth key thing that we would like to communicate is that understanding that money is broken now what is the meaning of this is this a negative statement so yes you must have often seen people cribbing about kya 
पुअर आर गेटिंग पुअर आर टैक्स बढ़ता जा रहा है वगैरह वगैरह एब्सोल्यूट वैलिड कंसर्न्स बट थिंक अबाउट व्हाट इज इट दैट यू कैन चेंज प्रॉब्ली वेरी लेस फ्रॉम दैट परस्पेक्टिव यू कॉन्ट गो एंड चेंज द टैक्सेशन स्ट्रक्चर सो वी कीप ऑन क्रिविंग वी कीप ऑन क्रिविंग अबाउट लाइक पॉलिटिशन दिस दैट इज होता कुछ नहीं है राइट सो दिस इज समथिंग दैट वी ऑल्सो यूज टू डू बट ओवर टाइम वी रियलाइज दैट देर इज जस्ट नो पॉइंट इन क्रिविंग अबाउट दिस यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ दी मनी सिस्टम एक्चुअली वर्क so there are two three points that we will quickly discuss so one is the concept of debt so if you can quickly comment on debt taking in the world then how are people taking more and more debt if you can speak about this i'll relate other points there see uh, yes debt is actually a very very tricky thing because it can be good also for you if you are actually getting returns or after taking that debt it can be bad for you if there are no returns or if you're not using that money wisely and in terms of macro picture that uh, how the world economy is progressing more and more debt is being taken by economies and there are so many failed economies which we have seen in the past there are so many struggling economies which we are seeing in the present also mm-hmm. that means that uh, this is going to hamper the world economy overall governments are going to increase the taxation structure in a way which is going to favor the rich but it is going to have a negative implication for the middle class okay so i think aishi is mincing her words so let me present like more details to that so take a look at this graphic and what you will see is that the corporate tax in india have been coming down but the personal income tax is rising and personal income tax actually hurts the middle class people the most in my opinion second is that we are moving to a world of high inflation and slightly higher interest rates so this is where inflation will eat a lot of your money so these are the type of problems or money related problems that you are going to see third and finally this has always been the case that rich find it easier to take more debt take more loan and gari people and middle class people find it harder to procure loans so please learn about all these basic basic things i keep on making a lot of videos on this topic so we'll not get into extensive details but do realize that money is broken do not crib about it learn about it with that said let's move on to the next point and i see and i were discussing and we truly believe that investing going forward is going to become harder and harder so i'll request i see to speak about some macro trend here as to why investing will get harder and then i'll tag along so let me give you a few examples here uh, for example despite whatever the inflation rate it and however high it is the interest rate that you would get on your investment in epf etc would hover around the same rate of 8 8.5% that means it is not increasing in proportion to the inflation which is a bad thing for us uh, the second thing is the indexation benefit on debt mutual funds was recently removed in this year's budget going to be implemented from 1st april but this is again a negative thing for the middle class so you're right in saying that investing is getting harder and uh, we need to find solutions for that what are your solutions so, so i'll not present any solutions but uh, this is absolutely true that uh, investing is getting harder with time for the simple reason that as the world becomes more leveraged leverage means taking more and more debt it becomes difficult to you know repay that debt plus make returns right so that is what is macroeconomically speaking is happening in the world that with higher debt we are moving towards high inflation and all that things i keep on making videos please watch it but this is actually a sad affair and i don't think that the world debt is going to come down any time soon um, this will remain high um, so yeah so lot of problems from that perspective how you can beat one advice that i'll give you is that please learn about direct stock investing because that allows you to at least save on commissions second key aspect would be that understand about different asset classes don't just stick to one be a diversified investor okay so final point from our side that please remember that world is a very uncertain place and always make efforts to stay one step ahead so i see if you can explain the statement a little bit then i'll give you my yeah, i'd like to change this statement to life is very uncertain and uh, try to be one step ahead you might not be able to do that but you have to look at where the world is heading what are the current trends and how actually you can imbibe those trends in your life to stay one step ahead right and just wrapping up everything that as we discussed earlier that you should prepare for your bad times in your good times as any problem again and then you start preparing and trying to fire fight it that rarely works number 2 create a portfolio of income create a portfolio of skills that really helps you a lot three find a partner who complements your skill i think these are some of the key points that i could think of anything else that you would like to add to this summary i would just like to add there are multiple pathways of success the definition of success itself can be different for each individual create your definition and work towards it all right thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this conversation and we will see you on the next video